Yo, what's good with y'all? In today's video, I got a uh, beginner tutorial. You know, um, people who watch my other content, they usually see that I, uh, what's it called? I usually got specific tutorials for like intermediate level scriptures, but I'm I'm starting to branch out more into beginner level content. I'm noticing a lot of my people who watch me are beginners that are trying to do intermediate level things. So I'm like, why not put out some content to explain some things, clarify some things for people. So this will be the first video of many beginner tutorials to come. So if you're interested in beginner stuff, I got y'all. Um... Or if you're just an intermediate level person and you just want to like maybe you want clarification or some things because regardless of your level there's guarantee you regardless of how good you become as how good you are at scripting there's going to be even beginner level things that like you're not 100 percent on and you, you may find something out because that happens to me all the time i find i find out stuff and i'm like oh i didn't even know i could do it i can do that do it like that or whatever so yeah so for this video the five basic functions i'm going to go over is touched mouse button one click activated triggered and changed as you guys can see on the notepad so i'm going to explain what each one is i'm going to show you guys how to integrate it into a script and talk about the uses and stuff so you like how you like its purpose i should say like for in games so first things first we have touched pretty self-explanatory pretty sure you already understood the means so touched you know that means you know um anything like any okay let me put it like this so touched literally means anything making contact, like an instance making contact with another instance, right? It like, it doesn't just have to be a player making contact with something. It can be anything. It could be two parts. Um, I don't know, uh, us like this, like the spawn. Cause right now the spawn location is touching the base player, right? Two parts. It doesn't have to be just players and stuff. So just making contact, just two things, two instances to be specific, making contact with each other. So let's do it like this, right? I'm gonna insert a part, right? I'm gonna um, make, I'm gonna anchor it and stuff. And here's something to add on about the uh, touched thing, right? So as you, as you guys can see by default, parts have can't touch enabled. So this has to be enabled for a touched function to work. If this is disabled, then the uh, touch function obviously it won't it won't run and stuff. Y'all give me one so, Okay, there. Never mind, I'm good. Okay, so let's set up a basic function. We're going to insert a script into the part. The only reason I'm inserting a script into the part, I know you shouldn't, you really shouldn't put script inside of parts stuff. I'm just doing this because this is just an this is an explanation video rather than like we're actually making something. I'm just demonstrating to you guys. Okay, so setup touched is very simple. You just have to reference the part. You have to, so for this, we'll say script.parent.touched. As you guys can see, fires on a part, touches another part as a result of physical movement. So touched, there's also, uh, as you guys can see, there's touch ended and stuff, which means, of course, when, when something stops, you know, touching the other thing, right? So touched connect function, right? Close parentheses, or sorry, not close parentheses, in parentheses, you're going to put hit and enter. So hit, as you guys can probably assume, hit is whatever made contact with it. Now, I want to explain something, right? I've seen a lot of people do this, and I used to make this mistake too. Don't think, don't think for a second that... If a player makes contact with a part, right? Don't think that hit is the is the player. Keep in mind, it whatever's making contact, it's getting whatever is directly making contact. So it is not the player or like the character that's that's in that's making contact with the part. It is a part of the character, like one of the character's parts, I should say, like a body part is what I'm saying. Like for example, if I was to walk over this part and I have the touch function set up, it's not going to say spider 19 touched said part. It's going to say, um, if you have R15, it's going to say uh, right foot or left foot touched touch part. Or if it's R6, it's going to say right right leg, left leg touch part, right? So let's go ahead and set that up. Okay, so hit. So we're going to do it like this. We're going to say print.hit.name. So we can, so I can just better show you guys. Okay, right? So we have our part, right? It's going to say the base play, by the way. Or, oh, well, I thought it would say the base plate, but I guess not since it's not actually touching it. But yeah, so as you guys can see, you guys see what I'm saying now? Like how it's saying like actual parts and stuff. If you're referencing an enemy character, I mean, sorry, enemy, if you're referencing a character, you need to do hit the parent. So touch functions are used for a lot of stuff. Um, Sometimes opening like UI shops and stuff, like you guys know, like how there would be like you walk up to the shop and when you get like within proximity of it, it'll automatically open up. Stuff. So yeah, here's how to check if whatever's making contact with the part is a player you would simply say if hit dot parent find first child in quotation marks you're going to put humanoid the only thing that should have humanoids is either npcs or players so going with this method will ensure that it'll only like proceed if it is either an npc or a player now if you want it now if you want to just make sure it is a like if you want to make sure it's a player now then what you should do is you could do you could do this and just add on just say and 
game.players find for oh sorry find first child hit dot parent member when you get the character's name so care so boom and then boom just like that now it would only activate for actual players and stuff so that's how you use the touch function and stuff then touch ended it literally works the exact same way uh just you know when you stop touching the part and stuff pretty much like once you've like once you've touched the part and then you stop touching the part like you walk off of it or something or if you jump or something it's going to um it's going to say you know touch stop whatever body part initiated the contact with the part and then if that body part stops touching that part even if it's for a second it's going to then trigger the touch ended function and stuff right so yeah touch is touch is pretty simple i don't, I don't feel like that's really a difficult function to really explain stuff so, very basic function okay so we've got mouse button one click so again another basic function um let's see how do i want to do this let me see Um, we could do it like this, okay. So, mouse button one click is UI, right? That's for text buttons. Just want to clarify. So, let's insert a screen GUI into starter GUI, and then we're going to insert a text button, okay? So just to clarify, you can only, like, mouse button one click, that function can only be used on text button or image buttons. You can't use that on image labels or text labels or text boxes and stuff. You can only be used on buttons, hence why it's, you know, button one click. So, if we go ahead and insert a Let's insert a local script into the text button. And then we will say script.parent. We can say that mouse button one click, right? There are actually a whole bunch of mouse button uh, functions, built in functions and stuff, right? So this is far when the mouse has fully left clicked the GUI button. You can pay attention, left clicked, not right click and stuff, right? That's what, if you're looking for right click, that's what mouse button uh, two click is for, right? So mouse button one click, right? So we can say mouse button one click connect function close parentheses enter so every time let's say i don't know uh we could put print quotation marks player has clicked just so we can keep track of how you know how many times a player's clicked so if we do it like this so every time i click the button it's gonna it's gonna say player has clicked boom right so let's see um what's a use for buttons um let me think so like i guess say if like I don't know. Uh, so say if like every time I clicked a button, say okay. So say if like every time I clicked a button, I don't know. I got faster or something. Like say we wanted to, yeah, yeah, yeah that's actually good. Like I wanted to change uh, a player's property, but this was only affected on the local side, like on the client side. But still, it's still good regardless. So yeah. So let's say I wanted to change it just on you know the client side. So pretty much where we're going to increase our speed every time the player uh clicks the button right so i'm gonna get the so i'm gonna get the local player first so i'm gonna say local player is equal to game that player oh sorry is equal to game that players that local player if you don't know what that is pretty much the local player is just simply what it says local as in the client side so this is just the player the player just whatever is available on the client side so we're gonna say so we can, we can get the player's character by doing simply doing player dot character. So we'll say player dot character dot humanoid dot walk speed. That's how we uh, increase the player's walk speed. We're gonna, we're gonna say plus equal ten. So pretty much every time we click the button, our walk speed is going to increase by ten. So if I walk, uh, you guys see I'm every time I click, I keep speeding up and going faster, 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 faster. And yeah, so that's basically how you set up a function. I know uh, with text buttons, you know you want to get players you definitely want to get like information from the player or the character or change something with the character sometimes it, it really depends and stuff i mean if you're doing like an attack on the on the client side you're doing like client side replication but yeah okay i'm good okay moving on to the third function now this function i really wanted to cover this because a, a lot of people ask me this a, a question i get a lot is um whenever i make attacks i i do i usually do it where it's binded to a keybind or like like you know a button on your keyboard but a lot of people ask me okay how do i change this to a tool so i'm gonna just like it's very simple so activated is for when you is for when players have tools and they click like they they left they click the left mouse button while they have a tool equipped so we're simply going to need a tool so if we go ahead and insert a tool into starter pack let's go ahead and disable requires handle it requires handle property right and then we're going to insert a local script to it and then let's say script dot parent dot activated boom fires when the player clicks while the tool is equipped right connect function close parentheses enter so this will pretty much fire whenever uh 
the player you know clicks well well uh let's say a player has clicked whenever we have the tool equipped right so it's very simple so for this you know this is for like a tax this is for like tax or it can be used for a lot of stuff honestly because people use tools for weapons abilities um yes yeah, used for a lot, a lot of different things and stuff so i don't really think there's really anything else for me to really say regarding it regarding activated i mean it, it's pretty self-explanatory because it's just like you know like when you click while the tool is equipped then you know yeah yeah it'll work it'll activate so yeah so that's how you would simply do it and then for triggered triggered is proximity prompts okay so i don't use these a lot of my videos i i've only used this in like uh cool quiz i've only used this in um quest videos and stuff but so let's insert so a proximity prompt you guys know how when you walk close to like an npc and then it says like uh i don't know hold e to open up menu or something like that that's what a proximity prompt is so if we click avatar rig builder block avatar right let's let's get let's make an npc we're going to insert a proximity prompt into one of these parts let's insert into the uh what's it called the human root part boom so we're gonna insert a proximity prompt and then we're gonna insert a script inside of set proximity prompt we're gonna say script it up we're gonna say script dot parent dot triggered then trigger and it is the opposite connect function then you can you can actually get the player who triggered the uh, prompt so you could say print player dot name dot, dot dot quotation marks space has triggered the prompt right so pretty much every time you trigger it then it, it'll work anytime you try to open up the prompt i should say so if i oh that's weird why is it not huh that is weird what where's the proximity box rig let's see does it need to be in oh oh sorry 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 not inside the part i said put it inside of the model so put it inside of the rig okay so since it's a server script i'll have to change that here so yeah so put the proximity prompt inside of the rig right boom so now you guys see how it says interact so every time i press e it'll say it has triggered the prompt now say if it was like it, it still will be the same i'm just going to show you guys this it'll still be the same if like even if there's like a whole duration like if i have to hold it it'll still work the same why isn't it oh let me go away for it it'll still be the same like you have to yeah like every time you every time you fully interact it'll just keep triggering it'll uh fire the function right so then moving on we have our last function changed. So changed once again, once again, another self-explanatory function and stuff. Changed. It's pretty much you're referencing whenever something, whenever a property of a parent is changing. For example, um, let's see, let's see, how like how do I even want to? I don't even know how I want to do this. Um, so I can delete the rig. Okay, so let's see. I don't I don't even know how I want to do this honestly. Um. Okay, so if I insert a script into the server script service and I delete print hello world and I set up a function for when a player joins the game, so I'm gonna say game that players that player added connect function and print sepa plr short for player enter right. So this is a function that whenever a player joins the game, uh, whatever we put in inside will happen right. So let's say um we do player dot changed fires immediately after a property of an object changes. So if one of the properties properties are you know transparency uh color anchored um position c frame so if i do player dot change connect function close parentheses enter so if i say print test now change in my opinion this is a function you use more when you're kind of intermediate level because honestly i didn't really that didn't really say using this until like a couple months ago and stuff right so it'll tr so it'll print every single time a, a, a property changes for my player so pretty much any of these so say if i changed um my camera minimum zoom distance to 0 0.6 boom you guys see how you guys see how it uh it went up pretty much any change to any of these properties and it'll trigger that so you can pretty much use it it's honestly very useful for certain things like if a player is changing teams that is that's what i used it for in one of my videos um when a player is changing teams or if you have like a stat system so you can set it up to where like if any of the stats change it automatically updates on the like it'll send it'll fire a mode event from the server side to the client side so it'll update the stats on the ui so it'll reflect on the ui and stuff i have a video where i did that stuff but yeah that's five basic Roblox functions if you guys want more basic beginner tutorials and stuff i can cover more functions other things and stuff 
definitely leave the topics down in the des description leave them in the comments and stuff and i will make videos on them and stuff thank you for all the love and support on my videos really do appreciate it if you're interested in joining my discord server or roblox scoop or both link can be found the link for both can be found in the description thank you guys for watching and i will see you guys in the next video leave like and subscribe if you enjoyed by the way